Hey guys, how are you? Steph here. So, somebody asked me recently, why is PHP so good for freelance? The number one reason is because PHP is so widely used out there in the business world. Something like 80 to 85% of dynamic websites, that is websites that have dynamic aspects to them, meaning their web apps, it could be a shopping cart system, it could be a WordPress, it could be a Drupal based site. 80-85% of them are based on PHP. That's just the fact of the matter. It's a monster stat. Now, the vast majority of these websites are small business websites. And who hires freelancers? Small businesses, that's who hires, hires freelancers. Small businesses typically don't have the money to have full-time developers on staff, so they will work with freelancers from time to time, or if not on a regular basis. So. That is the number one reason why PHP is so good for freelancing. When you are a developer, an aspiring developer, somebody's getting into the game, you have to consider the business end of things, not just the technical end of things. So what I mentioned, PHP is the best language for freelancing. It has much more to do with the marketplace out there than some technological advantage that PHP may have. That said, in terms of getting a PHP-based site or a PHP-based app online, it's really like this. It's trivial to do it in Python, to do it in Java, to do it with c .net, to do it with Ruby, do it with JavaScript is a much more work, in fact, to configure the server, set it up, et cetera, et cetera. It's becoming less and less with, I would say, JavaScript, but generally speaking, PHP is just a lot easier to deploy. And I think that's one of the main reasons, one of the big reasons anyway, that PHP became so popular because with a PHP-based app, all you have to do is upload the PHP pages to any PHP-enabled server and uh, Bob's your uncle, everything is working perfectly fine. Whereas with, as I said, with Ruby, with Python, with Java, with .NET, there's a lot of configuration and setup you gotta do is a lot more work. Just within the WordPress world, just WordPress, WordPress and Drupal, I think together they power maybe 35 to 40% of the world's websites. Think about that. I think WordPress is like 30% itself or 35%, something like that. Just think about that, just WordPress runs 30 to 35 percent of the world's websites that's amazing if you think about it now because of that that provides a lot of work for potential php programmers because wordpress is built with php you don't need to learn php to, be, to configure install wordpress but if you know php then doing the theme work and adding plugins and and doing all the things that you could do with WordPress becomes that much easier because you're going to know the language that WordPress is built upon. Again, if you are a nerd looking at this and you've got a Java background or you've got a Node background or you've got a Python background, I'm not trying to suggest that PHP is somehow technically superior. In fact, every single language, well, the modern ones, the big ones, they have their pros and their cons. Yes, there are areas where Java is superior to JavaScript or JavaScript is superior to Java or PHP is superior to Python or Python is superior to PHP. It depends on what the use case is, meaning it depends on the type of work you want to do. So one of the main themes of this channel, which I don't think you see anywhere else, is that the languages are the second choice in terms of your career, in terms of the job, in terms of your jobs as a developer or in the, in the development game. Now, in my own career, you know, I, I walk my talk. I've written commercial apps in nine different languages, and I would go in there and I would select the language based on the need of that job. As I say, you gotta learn on a need to nerd basis. Need to nerd basis, man. That's the name of the game. Developers, expert developers, they look at languages, they look at frameworks, PHP, Python, Java, JavaScript, et cetera, Swift. They look at these tools, these languages as tools. They're tools in your tool belt. Carpenter doesn't hold on to his hammer and say, I'm a hammer user, I just use a hammer. They look at 
all these tools that they have as tools to get the job done. You should look at programming languages as tools to get the job done. If you're properly trained in the fundamentals of programming, to jump from one language to the next is really, really easy because all the modern languages share the same basic qualities. I'm going to shamelessly plug my course, whether it's my Python course or my interactive web developer course, you're going to learn those core fundamentals that are going to make you uh, a very good programmer. And you're going to learn much more quickly than you ever thought before. It's a much better approach than doing project-based courses only. You want to learn those fundamentals, then you can do whatever you want. All right, I hope you find this useful. Bye-bye.